Hello and welcome to a new video guide about Grandstream GWN7600 series access points. In this video, we will go over the rogue AP detection feature built into the GWN7600 access point. As you might know, a rogue access point is an access point that has been added to the network without the knowledge or the authorization of the wireless administrator. In this video, I will show you how rogue AP detection works on GWN7600 series access points and explain the configuration parameters used to enable the rogue AP detection. Nowadays, almost every company or office has Wi-Fi to allow their employees to connect to the enterprise network. And deploying a wireless network without a security strategy can make it vulnerable to wireless network attacks. One of the most common security features implemented by wireless administrators to secure their wireless network is rogue AP detection, which is used to scan for unauthorized access points and prevent clients from associating with these access points. All Grandstream GWN7600 series access points support the rogue AP detection, except for GWN7610 and GWN7602. This feature by default is disabled. So when you decide to enable rogue AP detection feature on GWN7600 series, the authorized access points deployed in the same wireless network need to be listed as trusted access points to prevent them from being flagged as rogue APs. Any access point that is added to the network and it is not managed by the controller or it is not added to the list of trusted APs will be detected as a rogue AP and a countermeasure policy will be applied to that access point to prevent clients from connecting to it. Oftentimes you see employees install a rogue access point in the enterprise network to have unrestrained Wi-Fi access for their personal devices and usually with no authentication or encryption, which can pose a security threat to the wireless network. Rogue AP detection on GWN7600 series will be able to detect such access points and prevent clients from connecting to them. Also, any access point that is broadcasting the same SSID used by the GWN AP will be flagged as a rogue AP if it is not listed in the trusted APs, even if the access point is not directly connected to the local network. For example, a malicious attacker may run an AP within the physical parameters of the enterprise network to trick users to associate with the rogue AP instead of the enterprise access point. This type of attack is called evil twin attack. And in some cases, it could simply be a neighboring AP that happens to use the same SSID. This is why it is important to always run a Wi-Fi analyzer to learn about the SSIDs used by the neighboring access points before you decide to create your SSID. If by mistake an access point is flagged as a rogue AP, you simply add it to the list of trusted APs so that users can associate with these access points. And if there is an AP that is confirmed to be a rogue AP, you simply add it to the untrusted AP list. So with the countermeasure option enabled, when a GWN access point detects a wireless client that is trying to associate with the rogue AP, the GWN access point will send the deauthentication frame to the wireless client to force it to disconnect from that rogue AP. To make the deauthentication frame look like it came from the rogue AP, the GWN access point will spoof the MAC address of the rogue AP. So now that we explained how rogue AP detection works on the GWN access point, let's go ahead and log into the built-in controller of a GWN access point and show you how to configure this feature. So I would just enter my login credentials to log into the controller, sign in, and the rogue AP feature is available under security, rogue AP. 
As I mentioned earlier, this feature is disabled by default. So let's go ahead and enable this feature. So once you enable the rogue AP detection, there is a set of parameters that we need to configure as well. The first one is detect range. So we have two options, same channel and all channels. When you set it to same channel, the GWN access point will only scan the channel that it is using. When you set it to all channels, the GWN will scan all the spectrum. And the difference between the two is that all channels is resource intensive and it runs every five minutes. Also, when you set this option to all channels, the wireless users might experience a slight decline in the Wi-Fi performance because the access point needs to scan the other channels in the spectrum. Next, we have the counter measure. And basically this option, it tells the access point what actions to take when a rogue AP is detected. The first option is disable. It just tells the access point not to take any actions. You just detect them and list those rogue APs. The option low will make the access point scan for untrusted BSS ID and illegal access without authentication. And what I mean by illegal access without authentication is when there is a rogue AP that is providing Wi-Fi access without requiring uh, the authentication like web or WPA. If you set it to medium, the access point will apply the countermeasure to access points that have untrusted BSS ID or that provide illegal access without authentication and illegal access. And the difference between illegal access and illegal access without authentication is that illegal access requires authentication to connect to that Wi-Fi network. High adds the option of spoofing SSID. So in, so in case you want to scan the spectrum for access points that are spoofing your SSID, you want to set that one to high. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to set that one to high. And then the containment range, you basically tell the GWN access point to apply the countermeasures to uh, access points that are detected in the same channel. As you can see, all channels is grayed out because we are not using all channels. So in case you want to apply that one to all channels, you simply select all channels and you can come here and tell the GWN access point to apply these countermeasures to all the access points that have been detected as rogue APs in the spectrum. Next, we have the option, which is a string for spoofing SSID. For example, is using specific SSIDs, uh, you want to add them here. You can also add SSIDs that are not used by the GWN. So let's say the name of your company is ABC. Even if you're not using that SSID, you can also add it as an SSID. So I'm just going to add, for example, test one. And then the trusted APs, this is where you specify the access points that you want to add as a trusted access point so that the GWN access point does not apply those countermeasure actions against these access points. And the way you add the trusted AP is using the BSS ID. And the BSS ID is usually the MAC address of the access point. You can also use one of those Wi-Fi analyzers to get the BSS ID that is broadcasted by a specific access point. So let's go ahead and use this one, for example, 74AD. Oh, I need to add a colon here. And if you notice that there is a rogue uh, access point in your network that you have not recognized yet, you can simply add it to the untrusted access point. So let's say, for example, 74 AD. This is just an example. And you can add more uh, BSS IDs just by using this uh, plus icon here. So you can add more. So let's go ahead, save and apply those changes. There is a notice that will be displayed when you try to save these changes. And it says there may be legal issues following this countermeasure. Continue to enable this feature. So I'm, I'm just going to cancel for now so you can go back here. The reason it displays that notice, sometimes you might add a SSID 
that is used by a neighboring access point. So let's say there is an office next door that are using an SSID and you're not aware that they're using the same SSID as yours. So when you add it to spoofing SSID, the uh, GWN access point will treat those access points as rogue APs. The GWN access point will apply those countermeasure actions and it, it might prevent the users of the neighboring access point from connecting to their authorized access point in their office. So you need to use that one with caution. That's why I mentioned earlier that you need to run a Wi-Fi analyzer to scan for the SSIDs that are used in your uh, spectrum. So let's go ahead and save. So we're just going to say OK. And we apply these changes. So now that we configured the rogue AP detection, we can go under detected. So we can see the access points that have been detected by the GWN access point. So what you notice here is that the uh, GWN access points will detect the name of the SSID, the BSSID or the MAC address uh, of the access point, and the channel that is being used and the standard, for example, this is Wi-Fi 6 uh, capable access point and the encryption protocol used by that access point. Uh, and it also includes the MAC address of the access point that has detected uh, that rogue AP. This is useful in environments where you have multiple GWN access points deployed in a large area. So to help you determine the location of that rogue AP, you can basically refer to the uh, MAC address of the access point. It also detects the RSSI, which could also be useful to locate the rogue AP if it is in close proximity. It uh, also tells you the time when it was detected and the countermeasure whether it was uh, applied or not. And also the rogue reason, for example, here just uh, says wireless interference. Wireless interference just means that the GWN access point was actually able to detect the signal from that access point. So let's go to the next page and see if any other rogue APs have been detected, as you can see here. So I have this access point and it is connected to the same local area network as this access point, but I did not add it to the trusted list. So what happens here, the GWN access point will detect this access point as a rogue AP and here it it shows the rogue reason illegal access. In other words, this access point provides Wi-Fi connection using authentication. And here the countermeasure, it says yes, because remember we set it to high, which includes both uh, uh, access with authentication, without authentication and spoofing SSIDs. Here also we have another access point that has been detected and it's pretty much the same access point. So this access point is using multiple uh, SSIDs. Here it gives us the reason which is illegal access without authentication. So pretty much this is an open uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, there is also another uh, access point that, that has been detected, which is not connected to my network, but it's located in a different network. And it is using the same SSID as the one we added to the uh, string of SSIDs that the GWN access point will be scanning for. So in case, for example, you realize that this is an authorized access point and you just forgot to add it to the trusted access point, you can use one of these icons here. So the first one is added to trusted APs. So let's go ahead and add it to the trusted APs. Another thing that you might have noticed is that for each access point and each SSID, it shows two. So one is for 2.4 gigahertz and the other one is for 5 gigahertz. So in case you want to add both of them, just make sure you click on the add to trusted AP for both bands, then apply the changes. This same thing applies to uh, untrusted access point. If you notice that this access point does not belong to your network and you know nothing about this access point, you can add it to untrusted APs by simply clicking on this icon. But of course, you need to make sure that this SSID is not used by neighboring access points because you might block those users from connecting to their uh, access points.
In case you are using GWN Cloud to manage your access point, the process is pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and log into my GWN that cloud account. The rogue AP feature is available under the security tab, rogue AP. As you can see, the uh, configuration page on GWN.cloud is pretty much the same thing as we described using the built-in controller of the access point. You simply enable it and you follow those uh, configuration parameters that we explained using the built-in controller. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.